I'm going to talk about your dynamics in children and we'll focus this time on pressure flow studies. This teaching module was mainly done by Professor Yang Ju Wen from Jianzhou University in China. Uh, together with uh, myself, Peter Rousier, and Stu Bauer. And we have nothing to declare uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, conflicts of interest. We're going to go through this module by looking in the background for doing the studies, indications for doing it, technique, interpretation and recommendations, and finally conclusions. Pressure flow studies is an important tool in the evaluation of voiding function also in children with lower urinary tract dysfunction. But it has to be borne in mind that it is not first choice to do your pressure flow studies in children. The wet child usually can be treated with behavioral treatment, timers, pharmaceuticals, and uh, only in our experience around 5% of the children who are wetting daytime and nighttime, or only nighttime, and especially at nighttime, your dynamics is rarely indicated. Pressure flow studies is an, is an important in, a tool in evaluating the voiding function in children uh, with lower urinary tract uh, dysfunction. But it has to be borne in mind that when you are dealing with wedding children, children who are wedding at night time and only at night time, your dynamics, uh, your dynamics is practically not indicated in any situation. In those with day and night, night time uh, problems, only about 5% of those we are seeing will be subjected to your dynamics because they are treated otherwise. And it is also so that if, if you have patients around the same figure, 95% of the wedding children you are going to receive in your practice will be dry after two years with different measures. To the right, you can see one voiding, and that is a voiding uh, drawn on a turtle shield. And it's going back uh, to, to, to one to 2,000 years before Christ from Anyang in China. Pressure flow studies are defined as uh, measuring the detrusor pressure during voiding. Uh, it begins when the child and the dynamicist decide that there's a permission to void uh, and uh, uh, it has been given, or when there is an uncontrollable voiding. It has become the gold standard in assessing lower urinary tract dysfunction, lower urinary tract symptoms. During voiding, uh, the the trusor and the urethral pressure, uh, the urethral sphincter may be classified as normal, underactive, uh, or overactive. When we are talking about the urethral sphincter, we have to say that it is more the pelvic floor activity we are monitoring. If it, that is underactive, overactive. Congenital malformations of the lower urinary tract, like extrophy, evis batias, urethrocele, and uh, multiple uh, bladder di diverticular, may be indications for doing a pressure flow study. Also, in order to disclose uh, overt urethral valves, for example. But it is important to stress once again that the procedure must have an impact on the treatment strategies. And therefore, it is very rare in just the wedding child that your dynamics is indicated. It has to be done after history taking and physical examination, voiding diaries, uh, including fluid intake monitoring, and also multiple free flow recordings. Here's the setup for doing a pressure flow study. In this case, a transurethral catheter, a six French double lumen, is inserted into the urethra. 
and then uh, eight French catheter is inserted into the uh, 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 into the rectum in order to measure the extra vesicle pressure. So the vesicle pressure and the extra uh, is uh, uh, then we subtract the extra vesicle pressure from the vesicle pressure to get the diffuser pressure. Usually the children are in the sitting position when we're doing such studies, just as with adults. The writing is initiated when the eudynamicist allows it, when there's a cooperation with the child, or when a con uncontrollable writing begins. But during, uh, during the recording, a flow meter is connected to the eudynamic, the eudynamic equipment, uh, which allows flow rate to be measured and uh, the parameters to be extracted. The parameters we are investigating is the pre void pressure, which means the end of the systometry, the opening pressure, the opening time, and the opening time in especially boys can be prolonged when they have a bladder neck dysfunction. Then the maximum flow rate pressure is measured uh, also. A norm normal voiding is achieved by voluntary de de continuous detusor contraction. This detusor contraction is initiated after a relaxation of the pelvic floor, a lowering of the urethral pressure, then comes the detusor contraction and then comes the voiding. Here you see figures from uh, Professor Wen's investigation in young children, and you can see that uh, boys are, uh, are having a higher pressure uh, during voiding than girls in most of the situations uh, up, up to the age of 10. The true underactivity is defined as a contraction of reduced strength, and it can be encountered in some of the children who have been suppressing the voiding for quite some time. Here you see another example, and uh, that is an example where you have facy contractions during the filling, but then the uh, child is unable to uh, start the voiding. This could be part of the situation the child has been in, but it could also be an indication of uh, that uh, the child has a neurogenic bladder. The voiding efficiency is calculated uh, uh, from functional bladder capacity uh, over maximum bl bladder capacity. Here you see uh, an, ex uh, an example of uh, low detrusor pressure and a high flow. This is without obstruction, and then a high pressure and a low flow. Whether that obstruction is important is something you have to monitor over years. The true sphincter dysinergia, as in this case, signs of a neogenic sustained detrusor sphincter dysinergia, uh, is, uh, uh, is also found as a functional detrusor sphincter dysinergia over active urethra, where you have intermittent contractions of the pelvic floor during the voiding and almost or uh, even complete isometric contractions during the voiding. The post-void contraction is an enigma. Probably it doesn't have any impact on, uh, physio uh, on pathophysiology. In the conclusion, pre a pressure flow study is a useful tool in some situations where you have children who are not uh, responding to uh, uh, the many treatments you have for children. And investigators must keep in mind that normal bladder capacity increases with age. The true sphincter dysinergia is common in infants and can also be seen later on where it is giving symptoms to the child. 
to understand the characteristics of passive flow studies, knowing normal voiding parameters, as well as following the ICS and ICCS recommendations are the basis of a successful testing. I want to thank you for watching this module and hope that you have understood that pressure flow studies in children is something which really has to be done by very skilled persons.